Hi, I'm Jim Sermoniotopoulos, and this is MedPix Case of the Week number 691. We have no significant financial disclosures nor conflict of interest. This case was contributed by Rob Thomas Burrill and originally approved by Robert Jessinger. Our patient is a 24-year-old woman who presented to the emergency room with right lower quadrant pain. CT scans were obtained in this patient. We can identify the bladder, the uterus, the region of the cecum, appendix, and terminal ileum, which would be in the right lower quadrant where we would expect to find inflammatory signs of appendicitis. But there is also an incidental mass in the left lower quadrant. This mass appears to contain a mixture of different kinds of tissue attenuation. In this coronal reconstruction, we can see the liver, the urinary bladder, again the region of the cecum, terminal ileum, and the appendix with some fluid, but there is also a mass in the left lower quadrant. What is this mass in the left lower quadrant? Well, the lesion is in association with the left ovary, and it contains a mixture of fat, soft tissue attenuation, and calcified components, a true triple threat lesion. Again, this is a patient who has a appendicitis in the right lower quadrant and an ovarian mass in the left lower quadrant. If we look carefully at the mass, we can see the different components. We can see, in addition to the presence of the soft tissue, that the patient also has lipid material and a small calcification, barely noticeable unless you pay attention. Again, looking at the coronal image, the liver, the bladder, and this teratoma in the left lower quadrant. The patient also had appendicitis, which was confirmed at surgery. So this is a patient who has a twofer. The patient has a mature cystic teratoma, and the patient also does have appendicitis. This was confirmed by surgical resection. So what is a teratoma? The term teratoma was originally coined by a veterinarian named LeBlanc for a tumor he removed from the base of the skull. It contained a large amount of material within a fluid-filled or cystic space, and it resembled skin. The first edition of Verkau's book on tumors uses the term teratoma, derived from the Greek teras, meaning monster. The notion of a teratoma is that you have divergent differentiation, but there is loss of heterozygosity suggesting the origin of this neoplasm from a totipotential germ cell precursor. And although teratomas may have all three different germ cell layers represented, they most commonly have ectoderm more than anything else. And it can still be a teratoma even if there is only monodermal differentiation. Ovarian teratomas are the most common ovarian neoplasm. They represent about one-third overall, and one out of seven patients will have bilateral ovarian teratomas. But they are thought to arise from totipotential germ cells. The vast majority are benign and well-differentiated. Almost 100% of them will be making skin, hair, and sebaceous material, and about 30% will have only skin elements within the cyst. About 38% have skin and neural tissue, and about another third have skin, neural, and other types of differentiation. Malignant change is very uncommon at approximately 2%, and about 2% of patients with ovarian teratoma have immature histologic elements. So the most important things to remember is that the ovarian teratoma is a benign, well-differentiated neoplasm that primarily produces skin and skin or dermal appendages. The ovarian teratoma is thought to arise either from a type 1 meiosis error, a type 2 meiosis error, endoreplication of haploid ovum, arising from a premiotic cell without meiosis, or from the fusion of two haploid ova. The information suggesting the meiotic error is related to the fact that these tumors have a loss of heterozygosity in about two-thirds of cases. So the ovarian teratoma may have identical pairs of chromosomes. In a different patient here, looking at plain films of the abdomen, we can see a cluster of calcifications. And if we magnify this, we can see that these are actually well-formed teeth. Teeth are actually ectoderm and not mesoderm, and they are extremely common in well-differentiated ovarian teratomas. 
This is yet a third patient who had an ovarian teratoma resected. If we cut open the specimen, we can see the Rokitansky nodule, that little plug. We can also see a tremendous amount of very, very bright yellow, cheesy, sebaceous material. The vast majority of the lipid that we see inside of an ovarian teratoma is not adipose tissue. It is actually sebaceous lipid material secreted by sebaceous glands in the skin-like lining of the ovarian teratoma. Hence the unfortunate nickname of calling this neoplasm a dermoid cyst. We can also see in the same patient three well-formed teeth that are within the wall of the Rokitansky nodule. Ovarian teratomas may be complicated by torsion, by rupture into the peritoneal cavity. Malignant transformation is uncommon and is usually a squamous cell carcinoma developing from the dermal elements. They may become infected and some patients will develop an autoimmune hemolytic anemia. This has been a patient who had a, an appendicitis and a left lower quadrant ovarian well-differentiated teratoma. I'm Jim Smyrniotopoulos and I thank you for your attention.